Uh, today, we're, our topic is uh, working through and talking about how magnetic encoders and can uh, replace optical encoders and uh, when that's appropriate and how we evaluate um, when that's a good decision. And uh, we have Ted on the call today, who is uh, our sensor expert at MPS. Hi. Yeah, uh, Ted Smith. I am the, I don't know, FAE technical marketing engineer um, for the sensors in the U.S. So, uh, uh, yeah, let's. I'm looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, well, thanks for thanks for taking the time to go through this. Um, so, uh, Ted works with a lot of our customers on this exact uh, situation where um, they'll have uh, historically used optical encoders for applications and. Um, uh, very comfortable with those, but uh, there are many situations where uh, it makes sense to use a magnetic encoder with a magnet um, as a replacement. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, maybe you can uh, talk about some some applications or situations where that ends up being uh, a really good option for the customer. Sure. Yeah, that's. Uh, we'll, we can start with kind of a high level and and go down from there. But in general. Um, if you need, let's say, 14 to 16 bits or less, um, magnetic encoders could be a, a good solution. And um, when you get up above 16, and I think we're starting to push the limits uh, with technology, we may someday get to 18 bits. Um, but, but beyond that, uh, in these really highly specialized, um, you know, very, very high resolution applications, optical will probably live for, for a good long time. Uh, like I said, under 16 bits, magnetics generally a good solution. Um, it's can you uh, can you give some examples of those like where the applications kind of switch where you know just so people get kind of intuitive and understanding. Yeah, like sure, fair enough. Or 16 bit. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Those are kind of esoteric numbers to just throw out there without any intuitive understanding. So let's say um, a lot of this has to do with robotics. Uh, I would say that robotics is the place where you start to see that that transition in certain places between the, let's call standard resolution, which is 12, 14, 16 bits, uh, and high resolution. Um, and part of that depends on, you know, let's say if you have an arm and you have, I don't know, a half meter arm and you need to, at the end of that arm, think of a surgical robot, um, you need to have micron or or even just sub millimeter precision that means your angle uh error has to be extremely extremely small because it, it translates over that that length of that arm um and so there's some of those applications where i just i don't see uh, uh anybody getting away from from optical anytime soon that being sure. said we do have magnetic encoders in most of these surgical robots out there uh mm -hmm. so the you know there are things that can be done to increase the resolution or to uh let's say um to supplement what the magnetic sensor can do so you still get away with and, and the surgical robots obviously that's not usually a cost-driven solution uh those multi-million dollar robots don't don't mind a few dollars it's it's a size issue with those guys they want to pack as much stuff as they can in each of those joints because it Otherwise, the robot would just be uh, uh, giant. So I would say that's a, that's a good playground for where uh, another place that I think that we'll see optical for a long time is in semiconductor manufacturing equipment where you're tilting mirrors or masks at, at just um, 0. 0.000x degrees. Uh, and that's that's a very, very high, very, very high resolution application where you just can't tolerate the, the extra noise. Almost everything else... Um, could be a candidate for magnetic angle sensing. Now, one of the, I think, non-engineering or non-technical hurdles is um, everyone's known about optical for a long time. People have used it. It's been around and it's generally, I hate to use the word plug and play, but it's generally you have a module that you attach to the motor, pull a tab out and, and you're good to go. Whereas it takes some engineering work with a magnetic angle sensor. You, um, you have to make some, you know, run some simulations. You have to do some some mechanical adjustments. Sometimes um, you have to get comfortable with magnets. A lot of engineers, you know, just haven't done anything with that since 
since grad school or, or undergrad. Um, but that's where, that's the fun part of my job. I get to help out with those. And that's, that's where I hopefully can be a pillar to lean on and support those types of applications. And that's a good, uh, a good, let's say lead into, I think we're going to do a webinar uh, shortly about uh, an actual um, design project where you're going to, yeah. you're going to do kind of a kind of walk like through a, one uh, yeah. a, a typical there's there's no such thing as a, a typical but it will get as typical uh, or, or as generic as we can get in a in a design and look at some of the different things that, that we look at the mechanical design and the choosing the magnet even looking at hey you know there's magnet manufacturers here in the u.s there's magnet manufacturers around the world a lot in china obviously um how do i even choose how do i source a magnet those types of those types of decisions can you um so back to the applications, can you just walk through? Um, so we talked about ones where probably we'll always need super, such high precision that that uh, uh, that doesn't quite fit. But how about yeah. ones where you know, where you've seen um, good success, and even ones where um, where it's you know it's a clear uh, a clear fit for this type of solution. Yeah, um, I, I could kind of go through the various markets, but there's consumer, which generally consumer, the magnetic is a, a solution is attractive because of size and cost, but really cost when you're making um, millions and millions of something per year, then a few cents starts to matter. Um, you get into industrial and industrial, it's a good mix of cost and size. Um, so things like, uh, let's say agricultural, uh, uh, cedars or or factory robotics or factory automation um, and then the high end uh, like I mentioned with the surgical robotics but you see all kind you know factory warehouse robotics um, that becomes they make actually a lot of those especially you know the number everybody knows how things are shifting from brick and mortar to online purchases those warehouses are just ubiquitous and they make a lot of robots uh, that move stock around. Um, so again, it's a cost size thing and, and we've been relatively successful in all of those markets. And then the big one is automotive. Um, automotive is cost driven, but they're also, um, they like so-called diversity of technology because, you know, it's, it's a safety thing. We give ASIL for the automotive terminology, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, you can use a magnetic sensor. You can use different type. Or, or, sorry, you could use a magnet, and then you could use different types of magnetic sensors. So you could use uh, Hall effect, TMR, AMR, all the magnetic, uh, magneto-resistive technologies, uh, and get this diversity of technology, which increases the the safety factor because two different, completely different technologies have to fail in order for something bad to happen. So, so and that uh, that that's I guess new a new concept for me. So with in automotive, let's say they're measuring, but could be like the throttle position, I suppose. Yeah, um, they might have a magnet. Uh, one of the but, um... one of the biggest ones. One of the biggest ones is steering, steer by wire, okay. and just okay. regular standard power steering. Or, or okay, uh, yeah. Or so huge. well, they'll, they'll have a common magnet that would be on, let's say, on the steering wheel, and then they would have multiple sensors running, probably to multiple controllers and comparing. Uh, comparing yeah. what the actual measurements are and if they see some of they don't match up then we got a problem yeah, so then, okay yeah that's the idea so in in a standard power steering you actually have two places where you're measuring you're measuring the the, the steering wheel and the the torque on that steering wheel which is measured by a, a shaft deflection uh and then you have the motors that are actually driving you know helping the, the, the power assist uh you measure the output of those motors and so that's two magnets and then four sensors, at least four sensors. So um, some companies will do, will, will just do a dual die and they have enough diagnostics in those dual die solutions that uh, that's enough for the ACIL. Uh, some companies say, no, we want this, this diversity of technology. And so two separate sensors with two separate technologies. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a lot easier to do that than to have two big expensive optical parts in there, which are the exact same technology. Uh, and by the way, then uh, can get, you know, there's dust and dirt and things that can get in there. That's the other nice thing about magnetics is we're immune to that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the robustness and the reliability, especially one of those other applications you were talking about. Uh, yeah. 
Agriculture yeah. is a tough environment. Uh, warehouse is tough environment. Industrial is tough environment. Exactly. Yeah. 